Let me tell you what my deep research and basically vision is. I hope there's Bigfoot. I don't think there is. I'm not telling you nothing. <laughs> the aliens won't way. let it happen. <laughs> Happening now, breaking. And Bernie Sanders is a bear beats Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> what are the tips? Give me some tips on how to work with Wes Anderson. Um, be ready to speak very fast and very <laughs> clearly because that's definitely one key thing. Until you and six kids you barely know in wet bathing suits have surrounded nine chimpanzees outside of a Wendy's, you probably really don't know yourself, okay? Yep. And we back. Hello and welcome. You're listening to your new favorite podcast and the best in political sports and paranormal news coverage. I'm your host, Wes Anderson, and this is In the Shed. This is episode 79, so whether you're back for more or finding us for the first time this week, hey, thanks for tuning in. It is late Tuesday night, September 10th, and I'm in a shed in the backyard of my home in Alabama, all so I can hang out with you tools and talk about debate night. This is an emergency podcast. Um, Episode 79 of the show. We're on a race to 100. Will we get there by the end of the year? Or maybe, perhaps, in January. This is an emergency episode of the podcast. I did a poll on Twitter and I asked you, my people, all 10,600 and some odd followers, Should I do an emergency podcast to cover the debate? And the options I gave you were yes, you're a journalist. And no, who cares? And 67% of you, my babies, affirmed that yes, I should do an emergency podcast because I am, in fact, a journalist. So here we are together again in my shed in the backyard of my home in Alabama on a Tuesday night. To talk about the debate, to break down what really happened, what we learned about each of those two presidential candidates, and I did it at your request, because it's all about you. It's about you, my people, my babies, my tools. It's all for you. It always has been. Tuesday, Kamala was in the cut and she was, as the song says, choosy. Um, it's debate night in America. Apparently we had a debate tonight, or at least the mainstream media canned version of a debate. This isn't going to be one of our hour and a half long episodes. It's not a news show. It's not an interview show. No special guest tonight. Just you and me in my shed in the backyard of my home in Alabama. And we're going to cut right to the chase. And we're going to let you know what happened in tonight's debate. We're going to break it down as only we can. We're going to give it to you straight. Keep it a buck with you. And let you know what happened. Let you know what we learned. Let you know how this debate moves the needle when it comes to the presidential election. 
We're not going to be MSNBC and tell you that Kamala Harris knocked it out of the park and Donald Trump was a disaster. We're not going to be Fox News and tell you that Donald Trump was very presidential and Kamala Harris is a joke. We're not going to be CNN and say whatever we think will get ratings. We're going to keep it real. We're going to give you four takeaways from tonight's debate. And then we'll tell you good night and let you draw your own conclusions. The ABC News debate from Pennsylvania started off with some people that looked like they were pretending to be legitimate news people. <laughs> I mean, they were taking themselves far too seriously, okay? They looked like SNL characters pretending to be news people. And the debate started off with them saying that they were looking forward to a spirited and thoughtful debate. And that's when I knew that we would not be getting a spirited and thoughtful debate. The two candidates shook hands, Kamala Harris rocking her best pantsuit. Donald Trump had his spray tan game on fleek, as the kids probably don't say anymore. And then the verbal sparring began. And we have four takeaways for you. Four things that we learned from tonight's debate. And I'm going to share them with you. The first takeaway of tonight's debate was that Donald Trump seemed unfocused. Um, we know that Donald Trump's debate style is not to prepare in the way that most politicians do. He's unlike any other politician before him. He likes to go off the cuff. And that has proven to be effective for him in the past. Not so much tonight. Much of the momentum that Kamala Harris had gained since it was announced that she would be replacing Joe Biden at the top of the Democratic ticket had started to wane in recent days. In fact, on Thursday, for the first time in two weeks in our prognostication, Donald Trump had a slight lead when it comes to the Electoral College this was an opportunity for Donald Trump to come to the debate stage and to be laser focused and simple in his approach to dismantling the candidacy of Kamala Harris. All he had to do tonight was to be calm, cool, and collected and to stick to a few talking points. To talk about immigration, to talk about the economy, to talk about the disastrous withdrawal in Afghanistan, to point out that Kamala Harris is a part of the Biden administration and has been for three and a half years and has not accomplished the things that she says that she will do as president. And to hold her to account for the fact that Joe Biden was so incompetent that he had to be replaced. And have her installed in his place without even receiving one vote from the American people. And that she was with him every single day for the last three and a half years and continuously said that he was up to the task. And the public knows now that he was not. That's all he had to do. He had to be simple, he had to be laser focused, and he was not. He wasn't. I thought for the first 20 minutes of the debate, he really um, tried to make that case that he stuck to those talking points, but then he was too easily distracted and moved off of those talking points and talked about things that really don't move the needle and that the American people do not care about. If you're a Trump supporter, you would have liked to have seen him come into tonight's debate with a very specific plan and not deviate from that plan and execute that plan flawlessly. And if you are an honest broker, the truth is he just was not able to do so. He started off well, he started off doing that, executing that plan, and then as he so often does, it devolved into his list of grievances, litigating the past, and it wasn't effective. His base probably loved it, but it wasn't effective in winning over new voters. Donald Trump was unfocused. Takeaway number two. We didn't learn anything new about what type of president Kamala Harris will 
be. Um, she spoke in generalities. She talked a lot about turning the page, a lot about uh, a new generation of leadership, a lot about the American dream and hope, a lot of political speak. But not very much in the way of specifics. The only specific plans that she did talk about were some that we've already heard out there before. $25,000 to first-time home buyers, money given to small business owners, but very many times she failed to actually answer the question that was asked. She was asked point blank, do you bear any personal responsibility for the withdrawal in Afghanistan? And she didn't give an answer. She was asked point blank uh, what she would do when it comes to negotiating a ceasefire between Israel and Gaza, how she would handle Vladimir Putin, and she did not give an answer. Time and time again she said, I'll get back to that, but first let's understand how we got to where we are, and then used all of her time to talk about Donald Trump. She didn't tell the American people, this is what I will do. This is my plan. This is how I am different than Joe Biden. This is what it would look like to have me as the commander-in-chief. Instead, she just continued the Trump is bad. And we've told you on this show before, this is a problem when it comes to American politics. It's all about team. It's all about that team is worse than this one. And we get stuck in this vicious cycle and this conundrum where we are left to choose between two flawed candidates and make a decision based on who is less bad. Not who is good, not who will do a good job, not who will represent the American people, but who is less bad. An hour and a half long debate, we still don't know what it will look like to have Kamala Harris in the White House as president. Takeaway number three, the moderators were not even handed. Um... I don't know that unless you are very far left, you expected them to be. This is ABC News. Donald Trump certainly did not expect them to be even-handed. He still showed up to debate. But the moderators corrected, fact-checked, redirected, or interrupted Donald Trump on my count ten times. And only one time for Vice President Harris. There's no doubt that the questions they asked her were not phrased in the same way. She got a few more softball questions. They did ask her to their credit about the border, about the withdrawal in Afghanistan. But when she did not answer those questions, they did not redirect. They did not follow up. They did not hold her to account. I would stop short of saying that in my estimation, this was three on one. I don't think the moderators were actively working against Donald Trump, but there were certainly opportunities to follow up with Kamala Harris on some of these questions, and they certainly failed to do that. They allowed her to say some things that were patently false. She trotted out uh, popular Democratic talking points, such as that Donald Trump said that uh, white nationalists were fine people. It's not what he said. He wasn't talking about the white nationalists in Charlottesville. It's been debunked. Trump was actually correct on this. He was talking about the debate and tearing down Confederate statues. And he said that when it comes to that debate of removing statues, that there are fine people on both sides. The, they allowed her to say that Donald Trump said if he lost, there would be a bloodbath as though it was a threat of violence. It was not. He was talking to auto workers. And saying that in their industry, there would be a bloodbath if she was elected. Clearly talking about a financial reality. She said that he claimed that he would be a dictator if elected. What he said was, clearly joking. Yes, I will be a dictator only on day one to get the border done. They could have fact-checked her in those situations. They did not. They fact-checked him several times. The moderators were adequate, but certainly not even-handed. Takeaway number four, Kamala Harris successfully baited Trump. She duped him. She tricked him. 
She hit him with that okie doke and he walked right into the snare. Um, multiple times in tonight's debate, Kamala Harris worked intentionally to get under his skin. She threw in little uh, digs at him, calling him weak, saying that he was a failed businessman, that he inherited everything he had from his father, trying to get him off of his game. Trying to get him to talk about things that the American people don't care about that will not win over independent and undecided voters like January 6th. Like whether or not he won the election against Joe Biden in 2020. And Donald Trump's ego would not allow him to let those things go. And to work back toward his plan. And to the things that uh, policy wise he has an advantage on over her. She got him to appear to be riled up impatient he wouldn't even turn and look at her and it was noticeable on television it was her plan from the start to get under his skin and it was a plan that she had some level of success in she baited him and he took the bait those are my takeaways from tonight's debate from Debate Night in America on a Tuesday. Club going up on a Tuesday. Trump seemed unfocused. We didn't learn anything new about what it would mean for Kamala Harris to be president. The moderators weren't even handed. And Kamala successfully baited Donald Trump. What does it mean? How does it affect the presidential race going forward? Who won tonight's debate? We'll put up a poll on our Twitter account. You can follow us there and find that poll at In the Shed 4. I don't know. This wasn't Donald Trump's best performance. It certainly was not his worst. Kamala Harris uh, had a lot of canned talking points and speeches, but at least appeared on television to have a slightly better night than he did. I think that because of media coverage after tonight's debate that she will get a small bump. That she will poll a little bit better. But I don't think it will affect the race moving forward very much at all. Donald Trump mostly spoke to his supporters, to his base. People on the fence were probably not moved enough to make a selection tonight. And with 50 something days to go, 56 or something, until election day, it's still anybody's contest. It wasn't a disaster for Trump, but it wasn't a success despite what he may say. Kamala Harris handled herself well, but continued to use the playbook that Biden had in 2020 to point out the insufficiencies of Donald Trump without necessarily answering for her own policies and positions. And I would not be shocked if she refused to have another debate. She did one. It was on a friendly network. She's not going to go on Fox News and have a debate with Donald Trump. She's only done one interview. She did one this week on the radio, but she's done one sit-down interview with ABC, I think. I wouldn't be shocked if this was the only debate that we see. I think that the slight edge goes to Kamala Harris tonight. I don't think it's disastrous for Trump. We'll find out who you think won the debate, but I do know this. I know who lost the debate. And it wasn't Kamala Harris. It wasn't Donald Trump. It was you. It was me. It was us, my babies, my people, my tools. It was the American people. Because we didn't get a clear picture of who these people are. And of what they're going to do. And of what they want to accomplish. Instead, we got what we too often get. Two people who are saying, I'm not as bad. As the person over there. Throw your lot in with my team. And that's my take. That's all for this week. You don't have to go home. But you can't stay here. I can't either. It's back in the house and out of the shed for me. Thanks again for listening to episode 79. Make sure to subscribe, like, share, and review. It really does help. If you have any paranormal experiences, opinions about sports or politics that you'd like to share, you can email the show at intheshedwithwes at gmail.com. Again, that's intheshedwithwes at gmail.com. I might even read it on air. 
Join our membership club at patreon.com slash in the shed four. Look for us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Pandora, the Good Pods app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure to follow us on X at In the Shed 4 and subscribe to our YouTube channel at In the Shed with Wes Anderson 6670. Tune in again next week when we'll hit the headlines, talk some college football, and ask the question together Is Garth Brooks a serial killer? This has been In the Shed with Wes Anderson, the best new show in the land covering politics, sports, and the paranormal. Have an adventurous and fulfilling week. I'll catch you tools later. Peace out, Boy Scout. Meemaw, we made it! We sure did.